It is, alas, no illusion that life on Earth is becoming increasingly difficult. It is no illusion that the ship of humanity is sailing through ever more turbulent waters. It's no illusion because globalization is no illusion. Our inventions of technology and communications have made all of our problems more complex. They've made our small problems into big problems. They've made our local problems into global problems. They have made everything so much more difficult. It's clear that there are good things and bad things about this. The good thing is that any problem that any nation might suffer from, you can be quite sure that somebody else has suffered from the same problem or is suffering from the same problem, so help is always at hand. The bad news is that all of those problems now are beyond the reach of any single country to solve on its own. China can't solve climate change. America can't solve the economic crisis on its own. Mexico can't solve drug trafficking on its own. Malta can't solve migration on its own. We need to cooperate and to collaborate in order to resolve these problems. That's clear. And yet so often we don't. So often we don't work together nearly enough. Why is this? Well, the seven billion people who caused all of these problems, the same seven billion, I believe, who will ultimately resolve them, are still organized, not in a 21st century way, but in a 17th century way, in a collection of warring tribes that we call nations. And the nations of the earth are still, for the large part, fixated on the national interest, on what they can gain for their own citizens rather than what they can give to humanity. This must change. What we need very soon in the 21st century, as soon as possible, is to graduate towards a world of good countries. A good country is a country that realizes that it now has a dual mandate. No longer the simple old-fashioned sovereign mandate that leaders are responsible for their own citizens and their own slice of territory but a new dual mandate that says that everybody in a position of power and responsibility is responsible not just for their own people, but for every man, woman, child, and animal on the planet. Responsible not just for their own slice of territory, but for every square mile of the Earth's surface and the atmosphere above it. How is it that it's taking us so long to get to this stage? How is it that we can't grasp this simple fact? After all, we have the United Nations and many other international agencies whose job is to encourage cooperation and collaboration between their member states. But the fact is, we human beings are driven by two organs, by our heart as well as our head. And unless both are engaged, we seldom move. And those international organizations, well, to be honest, not many people truly love them but we all love our own countries. Very few of us have the spirit or the heart truly to love humanity or truly to love the planet. The Commonwealth is different. The Commonwealth, as Her Majesty said earlier, is a family. I was born and live in the Commonwealth in the United Kingdom. My own great-grandfather is buried here in Malta with an aunt and cousins in New Zealand family all over the world, I know what it means to feel part of the Commonwealth. The Commonwealth has the most gigantic power to do good. With our diversity of culture, with our scale, with our experience of every imaginable problem and every imaginable solution, we could be, and I would argue have an obligation, to be the greatest force for good that the world has ever seen. In order to achieve this, we need to make one relatively simple change. The Commonwealth needs a reboot. It has to reconfigure itself on a very, very simple premise, that everything we plan, everything we say, and everything we do in the future must be prefaced by a simple question. What is our gift to the world, and how is this part of it? We have reached a stage in history where the problems that unite us are greater than the problems that divide us. 
the Commonwealth must be part of this realization and the solution to these problems. And we can act it out every day so easily. We must start accounting for our own behavior, a balance sheet at the end of every year that says, this is what we've done for ourselves and this is what we've done for humanity. And our member states can start to do the same. And gradually, with our influence, other countries all over the world will begin to do the same and it will become standard practice. And thus, we will begin to graduate to the world that we need to see, a world of good countries. We cannot survive as rivals. It is not even enough for us to be good neighbors. The Commonwealth could be part of the next stage where at last we learn to be good ancestors. <laughs>